Well, I'm going to do a pellet to bore test, find out where these bores are and what's going on with these bores. So if you buy an air rifle, you're going to shoot it basically, you're going to see how it feels, what the trigger's like. But then if you know um, it's working halfway good, then you're going to want to clean the barrel to find out what's going on with your barrel, what kind of barrel you have. Is it a good pellet to bore fitting barrel or is it a barrel that has basically a lot of free fall with the pellet? What's going on with my barrel or my air gun? Now, don't take for one second that the guys that made that gun is going to make that barrel the way it should be. You get what you get, and that's just the way it is on the typical low-end guns, right? In other words, not the high-end guns. You can get a mediocre barrel on them as well, but typically the other ones are all hit and miss. Now, I got some array of barrels here. This one here, I believe, is a Hatson barrel. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to get yourself a skinny rod from Ace Hardware. Skinny steel rod's fine. Don't need to be brass, but get skinny so it doesn't interfere with the skirt. You don't want the skirt to be wedged out by the rod you're using. And basically now this rod is going to become a feeler gauge, right? So you grab your barrel, you clean it first with the goo one, right? And now it'll depend upon what gun it is like say Air Arms, Viroc, or Hatson. If it's a Hatson, you really need to thoroughly clean the barrel. And I got a little video clip I'm gonna push into this video so you can see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, your pellet to bore fit test that you're doing is gonna be thrown off and it may make you think you have a good pellet to bore fit when it's just the grime catching the pellet. So here's what we're gonna do. We got a nice rod, the ends are all smoothed out, nice and smooth and clean, it's skinny. And we have a couple barrels here. And you know, it'd be nice if you could take the barrel off your gun if you're good enough to do that and then pull the breech seal out. Cause it's gonna get messy with the goo going and all that stuff needs to be cleaned out when you're done. But anyway, so here it is and now the barrels are all been cleaned. I got that going on in the breech. Once you put your pellet in the breech, don't grab your long rod, grab something short and skinny just to push the pellet past the breech opening just to get it down started into the bore. And if you do that, you won't hurt yourself when you do it with the rod instead. Because oftentimes the pellets are hard, then it finally gives way and then you hurt your hand on the breech. So get it started down in there first and then take your time to get your rod in the skirt of the pellet. You can feel when the rod drops in. Now what you got at this point, you got a feeler gauge, right? And this is going to pick up all the subtleties of what's going on with your pellet as it goes down through the bore. You're going to feel choppy spots. You're going to feel smooth spots. You're going to feel snug spots. You're going to feel when the rod drops and actually to do and like I did with the tape, you can actually just watch the rod drop. So basically you take your two fingers like that and you don't use a lot of strength and you keep the barrel on some type of 45 degree angle. That way the rod's not vertically and the whole full length of the rod itself isn't pushing down. You just want to keep kind of a vertical, um, I'm sorry, a 45 degree. So now you go pushing down very lightly or whatever it takes because if it's actually snugger you're going to need a little bit more. But try to go with a light touch. And remember, you're trying to feel what this is rod's going to now bring back to you. So you got to work hand in hand. So, so far it's smooth, right? Not choppy. Nothing hard. Oh, I just hit something there. Now I'm hitting a little something that looks like speed bumps, right? So instead of smooth like we had before, I get these little speed bump things. I just hit another one. Now it's back to smooth again. Now it's very, very light. Very light, but notice the rod's not dropping, so it tells me I still have pellet to bore contact. So in other words, it's not free fall, but it's light. Okay, now it's back to that little uh, catchiness, but it's not choppy. And see, the rod dropped. So at this point, the pellet through all that way, once we got to the certain point, doesn't even fit the bore anymore, okay? So this is a bad barrel. Now, I'm going to pop this through. Probably hurt my hand. Something definitely is wrong with this because that part of the choke is back here, not closer to the, to the, um, the crown. 
So there's one example. Now what do we have here? I'm not too sure what this is. It's a Crossman barrel. What you'll find is even in a Virock, you know, it's hit and miss. It depends on what happened at the factory where the tool one was, how fresh the tool one was. But if I've had a lot of Virocs where the barrel, the pellet, the bore fit, basically was very mild. And then, of course, the choke's waiting for it at the end, which helps it a little bit better. But I got a video on all this stuff. Now, this one has such a very light pellet. Okay, let me just check and see. The pellet wants to move before I could even get the rod in the skirt on this particular one. Well, the rod's not dropping, but boy, it is a super light pellet to bore fit. And there, you see the rod drop on that? So it's telling you, look, see that? This is a bad barrel. Now, you can't shoot air rifles with barrels like this. The choke's not going to save the day, but the choke will help. Now, the problem with that is the pellet's not being honed in. The purpose of the barrel was to keep the pellet honed in, right? To keep it stable. So it's nice and smooth going through the bore. It's in line. It's stable. It's honed in. And then it gets shot through the bore. If the barrel has a choke, now it's ready for the bore, right? And if it's not ready for the bore because it doesn't have a good pellet to bore fit, it's going to be like that when it hits the choke because the choke's going to try to straighten it up. And when the pellet's flying through the air, it's not doing as good as it could have been if it was honed in before it hit the choke. All these things matter in an air rifle. Let's do one more. I have here a Leather Walter barrel, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, it's a Leather Walter barrel that I wound up not using. And it's a 22, I believe. So again, I got it in the barrel. I'm going to start it like that now I can feel right away it's smooth but it's a squeeze you can feel all this and it's squeezed squeezed but it's smooth So smooth is good, and as far as the pellet to bore fit, I, I got to put a little bit of pressure on to get it through. So, so far, so good. And now I'm getting resistance. It's, it's, it's telling me I got to put more pressure, but it's holding me back. So I got these two fingers, and I can feel that now. I'm going to put more pressure on it. Okay, now we're squeezing it more where I actually got to put some force on it. Now, see, I'm past that spot. Now I'm into this area here, and there's just something wrong with this board. It's not smooth, it's not consistent, it's, it's kind of snug and, and squeeze and then erratic. Now, maybe you could see this, I don't know if this is going to drop or anything, but the, the, it's just not smooth and consistent. Now I'm hitting a hard spot. Right? It's just a bad barrel. Whatever's going on in here is not good. There again, it's nice and squeezed again. Then I have that little free fall ship. So I go from a squeezed area to free fall for a split second. You see it? See how it is? And now I believe I'm almost at the end where I'm at the choke. And for that, I've got to really push it hard. So now you can tell what's going on with your barrel, what's going on with the bore. And that's how you do a pellet to bore test. But remember, you got to clean the barrel first. And if it's one of these Chinese guns or hats and guns, you got to thoroughly clean the bore. Otherwise, you'll have the results throwing you off. So what you're looking for is a smooth, hopefully consistent, uh, snug pellet to bore fit all the way through and if you get a barrel like that my friend you are very lucky and very fortunate because they do fluctuate and often you get bad barrels well with that I'm going to find another clip I'm going to include that and then basically um, there it is in a nutshell 
how to do the pellet to bore fit with your air rifle. Now, if you got a bad barrel, after you clean it, you can send it back and say, nope, check this bore, and basically it's bad. So there it is in a nutshell. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you on another video down the line. Now, it happens with everybody else too. So it's no different. The tooling just simply wears down and they're not going to throw it out. Now let's talk about what's so important about a pellet to bore fitting brake barrel gun. Let's leave PVCs and PVCs. <laughs> I'm a plumber. I'm a retired plumber. PCP in their own lane. Let's talk about the brake barrel gun. Now some guys think, yeah, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter if I have a light pellet to bore fit because my skirt's going to flare out and that's going to be fine. Or I got a choke and that's going to be fine. You know what? It really comes down to is your gun's not that powerful you don't have much recoil and Viroc made it and that's why your gun seems to be doing pretty good but what you came up with there is totally wrong okay now let's talk about that you cannot have a gun uh, where you are relying on whatever the skirt does or doesn't do that's regardless now the pellet relies on the proper pellet to bore fit and hopefully it's a nice smooth snug pellet to bore fit okay now the reason why is because why the pellets in the bore this is all common sense by the way this is not rocket science why the pellets in the bore the bore is stabilizing the pellet not just here not just there it's completely stabilizing the pellet properly and it's not getting blow by through the skirt right because you have a bad pellet to bore fit so if you have a really good barrel and you're the pellet in the bore and now you have a bore that's working for you not against you and it's not just that you're going to work and come out of the gun and hit something now something's working together as a team so the pellets now in the bore it's a good pellet to bore fit and as it goes through that bore we all know that the bore has its own barrel harmonics yes well what happens with the pellet when the pellet's flying through the air ready to hit its target it has its own harmonic buzz tone whatever you want to call it it also has its own harmonics also now if you have the proper barrel right and you have the proper pellet to bore fit and the proper barrel length for that power of gun you have all that combination coming together to do a job and work together as a team. Now, let's say you're the pellet going through the bore and everything's working good. Now you're coming up to the choke, okay? Now, because the barrel has put you in the proper setup, the proper position, honed you in and kept you there, now you're ready for the choke. So now when you go through the choke, it's a plus, right? And if, whether or not you have a choke really doesn't matter as long as you have a good pellet to bore fitting gun and a good crown. But let's talk about what happens if you're a pellet and you don't have a proper pellet to bore fit. And it's, say it's a light drag and you have a loose spot. Well, first of all, you're going to get blow by, right? Don't tell me the skirt's flaring out and going to keep that from happening because that's not what happens. You get blow by. Second of all, you're not going to be stable, right? Now, the guy out there is going to say, well, don't worry about the choke's going to square and save the day. No, that's totally wrong. Yes, the choke does help. I've had Hatsons where the Bowers were mediocre and I'd done a choke on them and made them better. But the choke is not there to save the day. That's not the right process. Now, if you're in a barrel and you have a loose spot here and you're not a good pellet to bore fit, and you're wobbling up the bore like this in slow motion, right? What happens to you when you hit the choke? Well, it's not rocket science. You're not ready for it. You are not lined up ready for that choke. And what happens is you as the pellet go like that because all of a sudden you got something trying to rectify you when you're going through it, trying to straighten your butt out and hone you in. And the problem is you should have been honed in ahead of time with the proper pellet to bore fit. Now that's an exaggeration, but that's how it is and that's the way it should be, not the other way around. We're not relying on skirts flaring out and the choke to save the day. The only difference is you got a good made rifle and it's not that powerful, so you don't have a lot of recoil and so the gun seems to be doing pretty good but there's a difference the difference is is everything on your gun honed in to to work together to create and do the best it can possibly do or is it just hanging in here and being okay here i am i'm not too bad enjoy shooting me all right well there it is in a nutshell all right now we are done. Well, i said, hope that makes things a little bit uh, clearer for you why you should do a pelt of board test 
Now you know what's going on with your barrel, there's no guessing. And then if you do have a problem with your gun, you can look elsewhere. But remember, you have got to clean the barrel thoroughly. Um, if you want to know how I clean barrels, I left that clip out. You can go to part two of the Benjamin Trail. It's one of my latest videos. And in that, on the second clip, I show how I clean these types of barrels. This way, this video is remaining a little on the shorter side. Well, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Right now, working on a BSA rifle, having some problems. So there's probably going to be a video on that when I get done. Thanks for hanging out.